Good morning. My name is Dr. Brenda Pruitt-Anisette, and I am the chair of the Coretta Scott King Book Awards Committee. I would like to thank each of you for joining us today as we celebrate the 52nd annual Coretta Scott King Book Awards. We gather to honor authors and illustrators who have produced outstanding examples of writing and illustrative creativity and whose works exemplify, reflect, and extend the dream and vision of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Just as we have come to recognize and appreciate Dr. King's message as one intended for all races, cultures, and religions, the Coretta Scott King Book Award titles enjoy recognition as well-written, superbly illustrated books that reflect universally accepted human values. The Coretta Scott King Award was named in honor of Mrs. King to recognize her courage and determination in continuing the work for peace and brotherhood. We recognize that our honorees are the artists whose hard work, dedication, and creativity make this wonderful event possible. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, this award celebration is being held virtually this year. Once it is safe to gather in person, we are excited to have an in-person celebration with our friends, family, and supporters. Before we move to our main celebration, I would like to take this opportunity to recognize Dr. Henrietta Smith and Arnold Adolf. Both were big supporters of the Coretta Scott King Book Awards and dedicated their time, energy, and love to this award. We will be forever grateful for their support and will miss them dearly. Please take a moment of silence to honor both Dr. Henrietta Smith and Arnold Adolf. Thank you. I will now like to welcome the 2021 Coretta Scott King Book Awards jury in presenting this year's awards. Hello, I am Jewel Davis and I will be presenting the 2021 Coretta Scott King John Steptoe Author Award for New Talent to Tracy Dion for Legendborn, published by Margaret K. McElderry Books, an imprint of Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing Division. Struggling with the loss of her mother, a grieving 16-year-old Bree leaves home to attend early college at UNC Chapel Hill. On the first night of her stay, Brie witnesses a supernatural demon attack and discovers the Legendborn, a magical secret society with members descended from the Order of the Round Table. Seeking to uncover connections to her mother's death and the Legendborn, Brie joins the society and finds she has her own ancestral legacy of power and magic. Exploring power, racial prejudice, and healing, Tracy Dion's fast-paced fantasy narrative centers Black girl magic and serves as a counter story that reclaims and infuses Black legacy into Arthurian legend. Congratulations, Tracy Dion, on your award. Hello, everyone. First, I'd like to thank the American Library Association, and in particular, the Credit Scott King Book Awards jury for honoring me and my debut novel, Legendborn. I'm also immensely proud that Legendborn is the first fantasy book to win the John Steptoe Award for New Talent. I wrote Legendborn from a place of both personal and generational loss. After losing my own mother, I found out that she had lost her mother at the same age as me, and that the same had been true for my grandmother a mysterious pattern with no explanation. As a science fiction and fantasy writer, I immediately began to imagine a black teenage girl who could go on a fantastic quest to uncover her family origins. That's really the source of Bree's story in Legendborn, a book length contemporary fantasy answer to an impossible real world question. As a young reader, I never saw myself reflected in protagonist of young adult fantasies. I had never seen a black girl 
be the central engine behind the plot of a book that specifically deals with magic, power, and self-discovery. I knew that I wanted a protagonist who would need to find a way to balance supernatural battles with wash days. I knew I wanted Bree to have those wondrous epic experiences in young adult fantasy revelations that we all know, like the classic idea that within you lies something magical and powerful. But I also knew I wanted to ground the story in the world that Black readers and children cannot necessarily escape. I wrote Legendborn as a contemporary fantasy not to make the fantasy more real, but to more intimately offer the feeling of being at the center of the fantastic, the epic, the legendary, and show that Black children can and should have access to that feeling in their everyday lives. Media, books, and people love telling Black teen girls what they can and can't do, who they can and can't be, what emotions they can and can't show. Often, teenage Black girls aren't even afforded the opportunity to be kids at all and are treated as adults much earlier than their peers. It's critical to me that teen Black girls have access to stories that help them see themselves as richly layered, complicated, powerful agents of their own destinies, not despite their Blackness, but in concert with it. Young adult fantasy is a broad genre where the possibilities for your protagonist are nearly limitless, and teenage Black girls deserve to see themselves as limitless, too. Winning the Credit Scott King John Stepto Award is an achievement, not just for me in this book, but for fantasy as a genre, and Black American fantasy in particular. And, if I may draw a broader connection here, this recognition honors a key component to survival in systems of oppression, which is the ability to imagine that which is not yet real. The ability to hold reality in one hand and the speculative in the other. The ability to live in the now while having a dream. Thank you for this honor and affirmation of my work. Greetings. My name is Susan Polos, and I will be presenting the 2021 Coretta Scott King Illustrator Honor Award to Keilani Juanita for Magnificent Homespun Brown, A Celebration, written by Samara Cole Doyen, illustrated by Keilani Juanita, and published by Tilbury House Publishers. Keilani Juanita captures the multitude of ways in which young children delight in connecting with their family and friends throughout the seasons, the joy in these ordinary yet special moments, moments that combine to create a tapestry, which becomes the fabric of a child's identity. The intentional inclusion of authentic, diverse, yet often underrepresented human experiences in this extraordinary book contributes to the sense of connection, of tenderness, and pride that exudes from every page. Congratulations, Keilani Juanita, on your Illustrator Honor Award for Magnificent Homespun Brown, a celebration. Hello, my name is Keilani Juanita, and first I'd like to start off by giving thanks. I'd like to thank my late grandma Juanita, who I know is watching over me, my mother, Charlotte, my agent, Jackie from She Be Lit, Samara, the wonderful author, all the people who worked on the book, my partner and spouse, Justin, my sister, Melb, all my friends and family, and thank you to the teachers and artists that supported me and guided me along the way. Lisa, Rachel, and Wendy, thank you. Though I'm honored to accept this award, and I believe it's worth celebrating, I'd also like to use this time to express some of my concerns about the lack of inclusivity within picture books. So 2019 was not that long ago. In 2019, 11.9% of picture books received by the CCBC featured at least one primary black character. Meanwhile, stories featuring white characters was at a whopping 41.8% and other non-human characters, such as animals, plants, and objects, was at 29.2%. So in total, that's 71% of books featuring white characters, animals, or other while there were hardly any picture books being published about uh, people of color and in this specific case, uh, black characters. Even within that, only 5% of the books received were actually written or illustrated by black creators. So while I'm thrilled that I won this award, I also think it's important to note that even within this recognition, the overall voice, art, and work of the black community is vastly underrepresented because of systematic racism, coloniality, and capitalism. It's not as though Black writers, illustrators, and creatives are only um, creating and submitting 
5 to 11% of books being published um, to children, it's more that publishers and the people who have the power within the system are not adequately uplifting and investing in counter storytelling within black literature and the arts. If you work at a publishing house, ask yourself, does your establishment have multiple black editors, black art directors, black designers? Yes, books are created collaborate. Uh, Books are created out of collaboration, but what does it say when most of a collaborating team is white? What is the message when white creators are awarded for drawing and writing diversely about black characters in a system that erases black creators? What does it imply when the majority of picture books um, published in 2019 and also now in 2021 uh, are featuring white children and white people? What does it suggest when there are literally more books in 2019 and probably now currently as well um, what does it say when there's literally more books about animals, objects, and uh, non-human other versus books about black children? When illustrating Magnificent Homespun Brown and every book I've ever worked on, uh, I strive to create representations and realities of black people that I haven't often seen in picture books. Redeen Sims Bishop says that picture books are a window, mirror, and door to empathizing with people. Well, if we look at the statistics and what's currently being published, um, one could argue that for black readers, uh, the mirror is foggy, uh, the window is too small to see anything, and that the door is locked. Stuart Hall notes that representation is not simply a reflection, um, but it creates a, a meaning and establishes power. And what isn't represented is contingent on what is represented. So that means we're, we're comparing um, the stuff that we do see to the stuff that we don't see. So even just simply erasing black people, um, so avoiding misrepresenting them, but erasing them, um, which is what's really going on with tokenization and hardly any representation, that message that is being sent out is that black people, black characters, black children, um, they're not of value, they're not of worth, they're not interesting enough to read about or uh, tell stories about. So what we need to do is have more inclusion. We need a representation of black people, but especially nuanced and intersectional black representation, because that's how we shape our culture and reality um, around valuing black people and black voices and black stories. So thank you very much. Um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Hello, I'm Megan Rose, and I am presenting the 2021 Coretta Scott King Illustrator Honor Award to Cosby Cabrera for Exquisite, The Poetry and Life of Gwendolyn Brooks, written by Susan Slade and published by Abrams Books for Young Readers. Hailed as one of the most influential poets of the 20th century, Exquisite, The Poetry and Life of Gwendolyn Brooks chronicles her childhood struggles, transition to adulthood, and the writing achievements that led to her becoming the first black person to win a Pulitzer Prize, awarded for poetry in 1950. Cabrera's rich illustrations, Slade's lyrical storytelling, and snippets of the poem Cloud underscore themes of race, poverty, and gender frequently found in Miss Brooks' work. Congratulations, Cosby Cabrera, on your award. Hi, this is Cosby A. Cabrera. I want to thank the Coretta Scott King Selection Committee for choosing Exquisite, the Poetry and Life of Gwendolyn Brooks, written by Suzanne Slade and published by the team over at Abrams Books for a Coretta Scott King honor. And I want to tell you a little story. It's about a little girl who left a relative comfort and reassurance of home to go into the world and go to school. And one day, as she was seated in her classroom, out of the corner of her eye appeared a tiny little slipper. And out of that tiny little sliver grew a funhouse mirror. And that mirror followed her everywhere she went. When she turned, it turned. Where she moved, it moved. When she bent down, there it was, facing her and delivering to her very specific messages about distortion. And all over, there are children that are receiving messages that are distorted, 
messages about where they come from, who they are, their very essence, what it is even that they can accomplish. And oftentimes, these messages are cultivating an entire self-concept. And out of that self-concept grow limitations. That's why I want to thank the Coretta Scott King Award Committee, because you are compiling a different kind of collection, a collection of stories that are archived and highlighted that show us who we are and where we come from and what we're capable of. And all of these messages are indeed producing a result. And thank you in particular for highlighting the figure that is Gwendolyn Brooks. It was not uncommon for her, even though she lived a very modest lifestyle, to sponsor a poetry contest, to reach into her pocket to deliver a cash prize to the awardee, to be a listening ear, to have a word of encouragement, to even return a letter from an aspiring poet. And her commitment was to our children. It was to the future as well, not just to her craft. And that's why I want to say thank you, because you are indeed continuing the legacy and the commitment of Coretta Scott King. And for this, I am extremely grateful. And it is humbling. So thank you so, so much. Hello, I am Sheila Garrity, and I will be presenting the 2021 Coretta Scott King Illustrator Honor Award to Cosby A. Cabrera for her picture book, Me and Mama, a Deneen Milner book published by Simon & Schuster Books for Young Readers. Cosby A. Cabrera creates a loving homage between a young girl and her mother. Vibrant textured illustrations rendered in royal blue, greens, pinks, grays, and brown tones further the intimacy and camaraderie as the duo enjoyed their daily routines. Childlike words, this is mama's cup, this is my cup, accompany the stunning illustrations picturing two cups, one mama size and one child size on facing pages. Mama and child size toothbrushes, rain boots, oatmeal bowls, and more further the maternal child connection. Cabrera's lyrical text and masterful command of color and texture make for a luscious picture book experience. Congratulations, Cosby A. Cabrera, on your award. Thank you, Coretta Scott King Selection Committee for choosing me and Mama as an honor book. And any person of color will tell you that it is moments like these that words do fail because this honor means so much. It is highly regarded and prized and esteemed by members of my community. And it has been since the 1970s. But I can say thank you. I can say thank you also to Deneen Milner Books the folks over at Simon & Schuster, and uh, Victoria Sanders and Associates. And if I could just speak to the committee members um, right now directly, I wanna say thank you for choosing a book such as Me and Mama, which details sort of the love between a daughter uh, growing up and her mother in their every day. And it's so easy to overlook the everyday and its seeming ordinariness. Um, but, you know, it is in the everyday that our souls are being nurtured and watered and fed and the psyche is given some solidity and some foundation and some shape and some capacity, capacity even to love. So I want to say thank you so, so much. Hi, my name is Jason Driver, and I will be presenting the 2021 Coretta Scott King Author Honor Book, Lifting As We Climb, Black Women's Battle for the Ballot Box by Yvette Dion, 
published by Viking, an imprint of Penguin Random House, LLC. Lifting as we climb depicts the exploits of little-known African-American heroes of the suffrage movement. With the backdrop of the abolitionist movement and drawing inspiration from Hillary Clinton's historic run for the American presidency in 2016, and the resulting wave of feminism surrounding this event, Miss Dion beautifully delves into the seemingly invisible lives of America's lost heroes. Told in rich, clear, and concise text with supporting photos, historical notes, source notes, and end papers, this compendium of heroes is sure to add depth and weight to any school unit about the black suffrage movement. Congratulations, Miss Dion, on your award. It is quite possibly the greatest honor of my life and of my career to be awarded this honor for lifting as we climb. So first, I must thank the American Library Association for even considering my book worthy enough to be bestowed such an honor. I don't even have the words to describe how much this means to me. Um, next, I must thank God. God for me is through whom all things are possible. I could not have imagined being at this point in my career without having such a strong spiritual foundation and faith. And so for that, I must thank God. I have to thank my family, my parents, my brother, my grandparents, both deceased and living, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, my village, who allowed me to step away from so many important things for our family in order to complete this project. I am so incredibly grateful. I can never repay you for the time that you gave me to get through this, but I hope that this is thanks enough for that. Thank you to my closest friends who I call my chosen people, my best friend Shamika, my sisters Antasha and Christian, who just showed up for me even when I was unable to show up for myself in this process. I am forever and eternally grateful for them and I will never go nine months again without speaking to you. I must thank my nieces. I wrote this book for them. They are the reason why I said yes to this magnitude of a project. So I thank them for being the readers I had in mind as I put this project together. I must thank Penguin Random House for publishing it, Sheila Keenan for acquiring it, and Jenny Back for getting it over the line. And I must thank, of course, my agent, Sarah Fair, who has stuck with me through all of the ups and downs and publishings. Thank you for seeing the vision and having my back through everything. And most importantly, I must thank the women who I chronicle in this book, the Black women past, present, and future who have fought for the unencumbered right to vote. They sacrificed so much over so many generations in order to get us to this point. And I want to implore our congressional leaders in Washington as the Senate considers HR1 to think about the legacies of these women. Do not allow their centuries of work to go in vain. Pass HR1, give black people and all marginalized people unimpeded access to the ballot box, no questions asked. It is the most important thing right now that we can do to save our democracy. And I imagine that if the women in my book were alive to see this moment, they'd implore everyone in our Senate to pass HR1 and restore the Voting Rights Act. Thank you so much again. I cannot put into words how much this means to me. Thank you. Greetings, I am Maria Estrella Stallworth and I will be presenting the 2021 Coretta Scott King Author Honor Award to Kaysen Calendar for their beautiful coming of age tale, King and the Dragonflies published by Scholastic Press, an imprint of Scholastic Inc. While Kingston King Reginald James obtains emotional support in the most unlikely place, he reconciles with who he is rather than what society wants him to be. The book beautifully depicts magical realism to introduce young readers to difficult subjects. Thank you, Corona Scott King Committee and American Library Association. Thank you to my editor, Andre Davis Pinkney, and the incredible entire Scholastic team, and my agent, Beth Phelan, and everyone at Galton Zacker. Thank you to the teachers, librarians, parents, and most importantly, the young readers who have shown so much support to King and the Dragonflies. I'm obsessed with dreams. I always have been ever since I was young, and the act of writing King and the Dragonflies felt like I was dreaming. There are even subconscious symbols throughout the book, just like in a dream. 
I wasn't sure why I wrote Kang's brother Khalid as having turned into a dragonfly after he passed away. And one day, I curiously looked up dragonfly meanings in dreams and spirituality. I learned that dragonflies symbolize transformation, love, faith, and rejoicing, even when faced with difficulties. One Google search even said that dragonflies symbolize death, portrayed as a positive messenger to loved ones or the manifestation of the soul's transformation in the spirit world. I got shivers when I read that because not only did the dragonfly symbolize Khalid's transformation as a human being who had passed on, but the dragonfly symbolized King's inner transformation too, as a young boy who found hope even when faced with unthinkable grief and transformed into a person who had the courage to be himself, not only with his sexuality, but as he stepped into his own power. I was thinking about how King felt like a dream the other day, and I realized that this is really all that books are. They're collections of dreams, pieces of the imagination perceived by our minds while we read or write. Dreams usually come to us as stories, and my favorite books always manage to make me forget that I'm reading, similarly to when I'm asleep and I forget that I'm only dreaming. I've always believed that dreams are meant to pass on messages, symbols with subconscious meanings, such as with the dragonfly. Books pass on messages also. We readers are gifted with the ability to learn more about ourselves and grow as beings through the characters we become as we read. Our lives are stories also, where we are characters who have journeys, where we must learn and grow and break the painful cycles that we've been caught in. Learning to heal and break free from these cycles caused by hurt and pain and fear allows us to turn to an inner love instead. That love is powerful. It heals, it creates, it helps to guide us on our paths. I believe that that's the purpose of story, transformation through healing. Writing King of the Dragonflies and the honor of so much support that has followed has all been a dream and the symbol of the dragonfly has helped to transform me too into someone who's healing, learning, and growing into myself and my own authentic, fearless self-love. When I was first brainstorming this book, I didn't know that King would be such a powerful catalyst for me. I hope he has been for others as well. Thank you. Hello, I'm Megan Rose, and I am presenting the 2021 Coretta Scott King Author Honor Award to Miss Mildred D. Taylor for All the Days Past, All the Days to Come, published by Viking, an imprint of Penguin Random House, LLC. In this epic conclusion to the Logan family saga, All the Days Past, All the Days to Come, opens in 1944. Cassie Logan, first introduced in Song of the Trees at age eight, is now a young woman coming into her own. Cassie's evolution takes her from Toledo to the West Coast and then to Boston for law school. Along the way, she experiences tremendous love and loss that shape her worldview. When she returns home to Mississippi, Cassie begins the long battle for voter rights. From the Great Migration North to segregation to the rise of the Civil Rights Movement, Cassie and the Logans, steadfast in their family bond, love of their land, and fight for justice are a testament to the enduring strength of black families. Congratulations, Ms. Taylor, on your award. Greetings, I am Lakeisha Darden, Chair of the 2021 Coretta Scott King Book Awards Jury, and I am thrilled to present the Illustrated Award to Frank Morrison for R-E-S-P-E-C-T, Respect, Aretha Franklin, The Queen of Soul, written by Carol Boston Weatherford, published by Simon & Schuster. Morrison's rich, vibrant, and grand depictions capture the essence of Aretha Franklin and give her the R-E-S-P-E-C-T that The Queen of Soul is due. Morrison's skillful composition captures Aretha's likeness from childhood into adulthood and masterfully pays homage to her contribution to the civil rights movement. Congratulations, Frank Morrison. Hi, my name is Frank Morrison. I want to say thank you so much to the Coretta Scott King Committee for honoring respect. I got my glasses on and everything. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cal, for writing such a beautiful book. I'm gonna tell you, there's not one illustrator off the cover that's not sitting there in February waiting with their fingers crossed at one, two, three, four, five, six in the morning for this call, waiting, hoping they get this call. And thank you that I did. Thank you so much. Now, I wrote a speech, but I done went through it 20 times. I'm just gonna freestyle this. Y'all know me. Anyone knows me from doing these things, y'all know I'm a freestyle anyway. I know I'm gonna write something down. See, I got the Black Panther shirt on. And the whole nine, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. So here, bear with me. Trust me, I'm sure everyone else is probably better than me. <laughs> 
All right, well, here we go. Man, it was hot. One of them hot summer days. One of them hot summer days where it was so too hot to go outside. And if you was fortunate enough to be in the house, you had to sit still. You had to sit still and be quiet because it was too hot to move or talk. Just waiting for that air conditioning to blow your way and hopefully, hopefully, it'll hit you. And it never did because the hit the living room floor that I laid on, never, it would never, that fan would never hit me. So as my brother and I laid there, we would never get some air. So we you know what I did? I broke loose. I went outside in that backyard. I said, Grandma, I'm out of here. I'm going to go with backyard, right? And they did good luck with that. And then I needed that luck because that backyard heat was different. That's a different heat. That heat wave not just stung you, it stuck to you. You know, that heat, that small, all that stuff get on you, know how to get. So as I dragged myself to find myself a perfect spot of shade in that backyard, I grabbed one of them aluminum chairs that was still hot for burning that shade and brought it over to that chair and brought it that. And I sat down and I almost went through and butt hit the ground. <laughs> It was worn out. One of them worn out chairs that y'all ever had back in those days. Y'all know them chairs. And I, as my butt hit the ground, I heard the laughter from the window. And then I heard, that boy can never sit still. And I laughed at my aunt and my grandmother as they literally looked at me from the kitchen window, the one without the air conditioning in it. Now you see, I was a wanderer back in the day. My grandfather and my dad would take me fishing and he'd be like, listen, Frank, you stay over here. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And I'll be up the block. I'll be up down the street. I got a lot of trouble. You'll hear in this story. So I wandered to the backyard. This time I wandered towards my dad, James. Now he called, he told us we could call him. He was my stepdad. He said we can call him James. And we liked that. And we tried calling my mother by her first name. That didn't work out that well. Anyone that know what a switch means, they don't understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> So I decided I was going to try to try to convince James to allow me to be hang around with him so I could get some of their shade they had under their vehicle. And as I approached, I heard him say, grab that wrench, Frank. And I was like, yes, I'm in. I'm in. And as I grabbed that wrench, now I get to go underneath this hood of this car that was cool, this cool car that they had in the driveway. Now, it was a 57, excuse me, it was a 1969 Blue, silver blue, lightning blue, T-Bird. Then they had another one. It was a, a 1968 uh, white vanilla cream T-Bird. The blue one was for parts. And then I heard, as I stuck my head underneath that cool hood, hanging out with them, I heard the sounds coming from that one speaker radio. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. I know what it means to me. Let me not start. <laughs> Respect. I heard Pink Cadillac. That's like my first time hearing Aretha coming from this this tape deck of this one speaker radio filled with grease. I don't know how they even got that thing to play. And then I heard my uncle yelling out from the cool seat. He had a seat that he salvaged from one of the vehicles, and he said, "I don't. You don't know nothing about that young blood. I don't know what young blood meant back then, but he said it a lot. Young blood." And I said, "What you mean? It was the '80s. We was popping and knocking." So I went over there and started doing popping and knocking and showing what I had. But I realized that I had my skills meant nothing to this cool time zone I found myself in. You see, the wind was blowing this piping hot air to the trees that we stood underneath. But by the time it, the wind had hit it with this air, it broke it down into a cool breeze in which, and the trees seemed to sway. So as my uncle and my stepdad James got up and started doing their thing, remission from the temptations, ain't too proud to beg, doing this, the hustle, do, 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 breaking their moves down, it looked like the trees were their background dancers. I was like, how y'all gonna have dances with y'all? How you gonna have the environment moving? I couldn't even compete with that. So the only thing that could stop this assault, this soul train line assault on my ego, my dance career, my fame, <laughs> was, a, was a cool sound piercing through the summer air, like the big knife cutting through watermelon. You know that big knife? It's weird. My mom, they tell you back in the day, go get a knife. Yeah, you are. It's a little kid running with a knife anywhere. Here, mama. <laughs> back in the day, it was different. So anyway, 
as we took this break and I looked at these men now, I looked at them and I realized that this is something, this is something here. But there was, my uncle Don, he turned up the radio just a little bit more as we listened to this, this, this church coming from the radio. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And I was like, oh snap, listen to this. And I looked at these two weathered men and I looked at them, I thought about, now I'm thinking about, wow, what they went through in life. And I remember James used to come home from these back breaking jobs talking about how he's tired of training the white men that would come in and now he's now they become his bosses and his supervisors and he's got tired of that. And then he went out looking for a new job. He got tired of the jobs he was offered what he would, could take. He got tired of it and he decided he was gonna open up his own business. He poured cork, uh, concrete and made driveways. I looked at my Uncle Don's shoes and I realized that there was war and I thought back to the civil rights movement and how we suffered and what we marched. And I thought immediately, I saw missing my grandfather and thinking about, listen, wow, he came up from the South and had to make it because he was running from the Klan. They threatened to kill him because he had to be, had the audacity to come home from the war and thought he was, he was, he could be a man. And it wasn't having that back then. And so he fled to the to North and built his own house now with his own money from his own business, Big Bag Henry Equipment Business. And I realized that I come from a line of entrepreneurs. My family is just entrepreneurs. So I paint for them, I illustrate for them. I dance for them, I father for them. And yes, now I'm a grandfather for them. Oh my gosh. And I want to thank you guys once again for honoring me. And I want to thank, because I got to wrap it up. Eight minutes, my gosh. It's my 20th take. I want to thank Coretta Scott King community again. I want to thank Carol. I want to thank my beautiful wife and my children that's putting up with me with all these hours it takes. I want to thank my, my agents. I want to thank Lori and Claire for kicking me my behind and keeping me on point. I want to thank Rico for blessing me with being able to work on these projects that I take and explore and take all these trips going and she reels me in when she has to. And I wanna thank Simon and Sosa for giving me the opportunity to work on books that matter as I sit under the African-American history tree in America, painting and honoring our people. And thank you Aretha for making our past and our hard times sound so good. Thank you all. And y'all stay blessed and y'all stay safe out there. TTG, thanks to God. Bye. Greetings, I am Lakeisha Darton, Chair of the 2021 Coretta Scott King Book Awards Jury. And once again, I am thrilled to present the Author Award to Jacqueline Woodson for Before the Ever After, published by Penguin Random House. Both heartbreaking yet hopeful, Woodson's novel in verse eloquently explores how ZJ deals with the symptoms CTE has on his father and how the family tries to cope in its aftermath. As ZJ struggles with his ever-changing relationship with his father, he is surrounded by love and support by his family and friends. The reader goes on a painful journey with ZJ and experiences through a child's eyes how it feels to lose the one person who is the center of your world. Congratulations, Jacqueline Woodson. Good morning. I wanted to start by reading to you from my Coretta Scott King award-winning novel, Before the Ever After. And this is the title poem. Before the Ever After, there was Daddy driving to Village Ice Cream on a Saturday night in July before preseason training. Before the ever after, there was mom in the back seat, letting me ride up front, me and daddy having man time together, waving to everyone who pointed at our car and said, that's him. Before the ever after, the way people said, that's him, sounded like a cheer. Before the ever after, the people pointing were always smiling. Before the ever after, daddy's hands didn't always tremble, his voice didn't shake, and his head didn't hurt all the time. Before the ever after, there were picnics on Sunday afternoons in Central Park, driving through the tunnel to get to the city, me and daddy making up songs. 
Before the ever after, there were sandwiches on the grass near strawberry fields, chicken salad and barbecue beef, and ham with apples and brie. There were dark chocolates with almonds and milk chocolates with coconut, and fruit and us just laughing and laughing. Before the ever after, there was the three of us, and we lived happily before the ever after. I started with that poem because I feel like we are now living in that ever after. And before the ever after, we were all gathering at the CSK breakfast and I was hugging so many of you. I was taking pictures with the committee. I was hanging out with people I hadn't seen in the year since the last ceremony. We were singing Lift Every Voice and Sing and there were people who didn't know it by heart. I know it by heart. Uh, and they were maybe on the dais looking for the lyrics, <laughs> hoping that someone would share their copy. Um, I've been thinking about all of that as I thought about what I was going to say this morning to you, which is first and foremost, thank you to the committee for choosing Before the Ever After as this year's CSK Coretta Scott King award-winning book. Um, it means so much to me in this time of a pandemic, in this time of pandemonium, in this time of a revolution, in this time when we are so seeing every day what can and has been happening to black and brown bodies and and doing the work to try to change that narrative um, not only on the field but of course in the streets and in the world so i am grateful for seeing to the committee for seeing this book and for seeing the the story i'm trying to tell about a father and a son and the deep love inside of this family and the ways in which we need our village um in in before the ever after zj has his homeboys he has his ride ride or die folks and he has his family and um I think about that when I think about the Coretta Scott King Award and I think about my years and years growing up inside this family because so many of you knew me when um, my first book um, was published. You knew me when um, From the Notebooks of Melanin Son got a CSK Honor Award and you've known me on this journey and you've had your hand on my back on this journey and I am hoping, I am hoping that the young writers who are watching this, the young writers who are coming up behind people like me and Virginia Hamilton and the McKissicks and, and so many of us who were on, and Rita Williams Garcia, you know, I got you Rita, um, are on this journey way back in the day and Sharon Draper and Sharon Flake, I mean, the list goes on and on and Walter D. Myers, but I can't say the whole list because I'm supposed to keep this under eight minutes, but y'all know who you are and you know that we have been walking this road together for a long time and now we're in the ever after of it, past this pandemic. And my hope is that next year, inshallah, God willing, um, we will be in a room together and I can hug so many of you that I haven't seen and we can cry those happy tears of being reunited and we can cry the tears of the people for the people who we've lost on this journey um, both to COVID and in other ways um, I am so grateful to still be walking through the world with so many of you of you and I am grateful to the ancestors the new ancestors and the ancestors that have gone long before us and keep walking this road with us through the um, stories that we tell about them and um, through the stories that they've left with us. So um, it's an amazing day. It's an amazing time. I am excited to be here. I am excited that um, the universe chose to let me see another day. And I am deeply, deeply, deeply grateful to you. I'm coming to you from my home in Brooklyn, New York, and I hope the next time I'm listening to a Coretta Scott King Award is going to be at a table 
really really early in the morning and we are all going to have prayed and we are all going to have sang lift every voice and sing and I am gonna be my old off-key self because that's who I've always been and I'm going to again think about this journey I'm gonna think about this year the years before and I'm gonna think about that moment and as I'm thinking about it I'm visualizing us all being in that room together so 2022 here we all come thank you committee thank you everyone listening to this I adore y'all you know that let's stay strong let's stay together bye Dorothy L Guthrie is an award-winning retired librarian district administrator author and school board member a respected children's literature advocate, Guthrie promotes and affirms the rich perspectives of African Americans. She infuses Coretta Scott King award-winning books into programs that engage libraries, schools, and communities. Her work, integrating African American literature in the library and classroom, provides educators with effective instructional strategies and ideas. Guthrie founded the first African-American museum in her home of Gaston County, North Carolina. Her enthusiasm and creativity for connecting her community with African-American books is uniquely inspiring. Dorothy L. Guthrie, for your exemplary programs that elevate awareness of diverse literature, both locally and nationally, we present you with the 2021 Coretta Scott King Virginia Hamilton Practitioner Award for Lifetime Achievement. Congratulations. Good morning. I am so excited to have my work recognized by the Coretta Scott King Virginia Hamilton Award for Lifetime Achievement. I want to thank Chairperson Ida Thompson and the Virginia Hamilton Lifetime Achievement Award Jury for this honor. Virginia Hamilton was one of my favorite authors. I can still remember how I felt when I read her novel, The House of Dysdria. Dysdria showed compassion by accommodating fugitive slaves who embarked on the Underground Railroad. And today, I can associate the book with people in my life who helped me reach my goals. I want to thank my husband and best friend, Bobby Guthrie, who encourages me to use my God-given talents, prays for me, and has supported my dream. I want to make this statement from the innermost part of my heart. The Coretta Scott King Book Awards completely changed my life. While growing up in the little town of Clover, South Carolina, the oldest of six children, born to a sharecropper and his wife, I didn't know much about the world. I only knew how to drop cotton seeds, weed out the grass found between the cotton stalks and rows, and pull out the white fluffy cotton from the bowls. I realized at an early age that the cotton crops were my parents' only income and I needed to help them. When I was not in the fields, I was attending to my younger siblings, dreaming that I was in school. It was great to know that when Farmer Lil John, my dad, carried a bale of cotton to the cotton gin, that meant we would get a loaf of store-bought bread and a pound of bologna, which was indeed a special treat in our house. When I began my life journey, one thing I knew for certain was that I wanted to carry more on my shoulders than a cotton sack made from burlap. I graduated from Roosevelt High School in 1964. I attended South Carolina State College, now University, in the fall of that year. We did not own a car, so our neighbor drove me to Orangeburg, South Carolina. Wow, what a big world it seemed to me. 
to see a large territory dedicated to teaching and learning. I will never forget Mrs. Rossi Caldwell, my freshman advisor and associate professor in the School of Library Science. It was she that motivated me to become a librarian. One day, she introduced Madeline Robinson Stratton's book, Negroes Who Helped Build America. I fell in love with that book. For the first time in my life, words seemed to jump off the pages right into my heart, soothing my soul with comfort. I fell in love with my history because of that book. But wait, where were this book and others like it when I needed them in my school? Why hadn't I found these books in my library? While I learned how to read from books about Dick, Jane, and Sally, I could not relate to them. And there were times when I found a book that I wanted to read, but often I could not finish it because of missing pages filled with crayons or pencil marks or pages stuck together with bubble gum. In 1970, I became the outreach librarian at the Gaston Regional Library in Gastonia. I rode on the bookmobile. I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to give those excited little readers approaching the bookmobile books that served as mirrors so they could see reflections and relate to characters and feel represented. This became a challenge due to the small number of books published representing the black experience. One day, in a local high school classroom, I observed a group of students who seemed bored and appeared to be lagging academically. I believe some of them, or some of that, was due to a lack of identity or a deficiency in cultural relationships. So many of these students were of color. I believe that I could change their mindset and do it through the Coretta Scott King Book Awards. I approached the superintendent and curriculum coordinator for Gaston County Schools with my concerns. I was asked, what is worth knowing? What measurable competencies should students be expected to achieve? What are the benefits of representing these books at the high school level? You're right, I had the answers. I said, they represent diversity cultural related literature in print and non-print and they build character. With permission to teach the Coretta Scott King Book Awards curriculum, which I created for nine weeks, I was ready to motivate those young people just as Rossi Caldwell had motivated me. In fact, of the first day that I walked into the classroom, if my love for promoting the Coretta Scott King books and their need for knowing about them were not so critical, I would have turned around and returned to my office. Nonetheless, I pulled out my basketball and I began to dribble. Then I introduced SLAM by Walter Dean Myers. Slowly heads began to leave the desk. Next, I pulled out a needle, thread, and quilt squares, and I talked about the patchwork quilt. And finally, I put on an old bonnet, and I began to recite Ain't I a Woman by Sojourner Truth, written by Patricia McKissick. Realizing that educational standards are still deficient in covering African-American history and culture, I wanted to find a way to tell our stories, their stories. I wanted to find a way for people to see the world and learn more about the voices that rang out for freedom. On February 16th, 2019, my wish was granted by the opening of the African-American Museum of History and Culture at Lorraine Mill. The grand opening brought together elected officials, community leaders, citizens across Gaston County. And from February 16, 2019 to March 16, 2020, 
Over 4,000 visitors had passed through the museum and we were able to sponsor a summer enrichment program for 50 children from preschool to ninth grade. The Coretta Scott King Book Awards are very much a part of our history, tours, and programming. I have been strengthened and motivated by my experience as a librarian, as an author, and founder of a museum. Thank you once again to the Coretta Scott King Virginia Hamilton Award for Lifetime Achievement Jury for shaking me, for awakening me, and informing me that the dream is a reality. Thank you. On behalf of the Coretta Scott King Book Awards Committee, I want to congratulate all of the 2021 Coretta Scott King Book Award recipients. A big thank you is extended to Penguin Random House, our author winner's publisher, for designing this year's discussion guide. The 2021 Coretta Scott King Book Awards discussion guide is now available on our website and it is free to use. A special thanks is also extended to the ALA Office of Diversity, Literacy, and Outreach Services, the Ethnic Multicultural International Exchange Roundtable, our award sponsors, and everyone involved in the C Coretta Scott King Book Awards. If you are an ALA and EMERT member, please consider becoming part of the CSK community. Contact diversity at ALA.org for more information. Lastly, please encourage your schools and libraries to purchase copies of the Coretta Scott King Book Award winning titles. Award seals are available through the ALA store for all CSK award levels. Again, thank you for attending and helping us celebrate this wonderful talent today. Enjoy the rest of your day and see you next year.